Hi friends, so my first one was a landline, which it occurs to me is something that some of you may never have had. It was just a piece of black plastic with buttons that glowed green when you picked up the receiver. And you'd be damned if you're trying to get me to use it to do anything as simple as order a pizza. But I did use it every day after walking home from school to call my best friend Lisa. I'd wrap that curly phone cord around my fingers and my wrists and around the legs of chairs as I paced around the kitchen table while we talked about computer games or how much makeup we could get away with wearing without our moms noticing. We talked so much I dreamed of having my own line with my own number in my own room, but I would get one of those purple see-through plastic phones where you could see all the inner workings. Lisa and I had grown apart by seventh grade, never to speak again until we ended up accidental neighbors in our college dorm room. But I can still remember how to dial her parents' phone number by heart. I can still hear the touch tone. Boop, 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 boop. Now, for those of you who are terrified of phones, fear not. I am not here to rail against the rising generation for preferring to communicate in a different way than I do. After all, I'm one of you lovable mole people who strongly prefers text communication and hates the outside. It's just that I've been thinking a lot about the objects we use as proxies for the words and voices of people we love. I can't remember what I said in those after school phone calls or even what my friend's voice sounded like, but I remember the mechanics of it so well. You do it too, right? Like, you probably don't have boxes of creased up love letters. You may not remember twirling your first phone cord around your wrist, but you've agonized over the red receipts from texts from a new love or a new friend. You know exactly whether their words appear in green bubbles or blue. I can picture my parents fiddling with their iPad half a country away, trying to get both of their faces in the FaceTime frame. But I can't remember exactly what we talked about, even last week. I think that as we become able to communicate with people farther and farther away, maybe we still want something close to us. If we can't hug someone or put our hands through their hair, maybe we'll settle for fiddling with wires or treating our phones as phantom limbs, always patting ourselves down to make sure they're there. So I want to know in the comments what objects you substitute for the people you love who are not near to you. Do they have any particular significance or did they just happen to be in the right place at the right time? You could also send me a picture of that thing if you like on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Snapchat, or Peach using the links below. You can also subscribe if you are so inclined and I will see you next week. Bye.